Well, hello there. It's a very hot, hot night over here. <laughs> and I just felt like making quite a simple little video thanking a couple of you guys for some really, really cool things that have come in the mail recently. And I also wanted to have a bit of a waffle about general stuff too, and a bit of a gigantic freaking apology for certain things that I'm sure you've noticed <laughs> that I've been doing or not doing, um, and that I am trying to improve on. And I thought it might be nice to have this kind of general waffle in ASMR, because I have noticed whenever I have to interrupt my editing and stick a narration in the middle, it always sounds so much freaking nicer through my microphone than it does through my camera. And it's also very nice being plugged into my microphone. It's like interactive ASMR. It's it's like the sounds are all magnified and whispery. And I, I really like it. Um, for instance, I, I came across a couple of really cool sounds. First of all, I was blowing my nose like a disgusting peasant. And uh, <laughs> sounds like little bat wings. Little bat wings flapping in the night. I discovered that. Oh, that just gave me tingles. I don't get tingles from ASMR. I really like it, but I don't get tingles. But that. Wow. Oh my God, that's so cool. You have to tell me, does, it, does that do it for you too? Um, and also my, my little two-sided owl on one side He's the cocaine owl, he's very, very awake. And on the other side, he's crashed out and he's got to sleep. He's a peaceful owl, but he's got, he's got little beans in him and he makes... Really quite a nice sound. Whoa, that's like, like waves on the beach. I am gonna start talking to you and stop dicking around with sounds in a minute, but... So anyway, yes, I'm going to start, actually, I'm going to start with my apology. Uh, so first of all, my apology, I need to apologize for the fact that I have had a gigantic case of inboxophobia lately. Um, about a year ago, a couple of things coincided. There was certain drama and there was also my least favorite person in the entire world like you know you know if if you were given one gun and one bullet <laughs> and they said hey you can legally go kill someone with this bullet you know you've probably got one person who's like top of your list well that person round about the time there was drama this person my least favorite motherfucking person in the world um comes sliding in my in my DMs. And uh, as a combination of these two things happening in the same week, I was just like, you know what? The internet is a, is a mood altering substance, which is why maybe you have chosen to wander into an ASMR video because the world is quite strange and hectic right now and ASMR is peaceful. So this is the thing, you can click on things and you can make yourself feel any kind of way you wanna feel. Um, so when you've had repeated experiences going into your DMs or your inbox and it's like, ah, drama, like, ah, person I wanna murder, <laughs> um, you kind of decide, you know what? I know what's gonna make me feel better and that's just not going in my DMs at all. Uh, so that was about a year ago and I basically haven't opened almost any of my inboxes or DMs or anything for a year. Um, so that's one thing I have to apologize for because I've accidentally opened my, <laughs> this is so ridiculous, this is so psychotic, but you know when you're on Instagram, if there's um, a picture that's got like multiple images and you slide through them, you know, if you slide one time too many, you go into your DMs by accident and that happens every now and then and I, I freak out. But 
I see, I see people that I'm like, oh my God, they DM'd me, they're so cool, I want to talk to them. But I'm like, but if I actually like go in there properly, I'm going to see what else is in there and I can't deal with that. So I'm just, even though there are these cool people and I, I know I'm missing opportunities, somebody very, very freaking cool offered me um, an opportunity literally about a year ago when all this started. And uh, I mean, I don't know if they're just trying to get in my pants. That is quite possible. But (laughs) if it's true, then it's very cool. And I have just been like letting this slip me by because I'm just inboxophobic right now. But where this really uh, relates to you guys is that this whole inbox of phobia has also overflowed into YouTube comments. I have been really absent in my own comment threads for a while. I did pop into the last one and actually I had a nice time. It was really nice responding to people and I am so lucky with you guys. You guys are a wonderful, intelligent, mature bunch who know the difference between debating and shit flinging and that is so vital on the internet i don't know how i got so lucky with you guys but i did um so i feel like a gigantic asshole for having been so absent in my comment threads recently um i am gonna try and scooch back through a few of them in the next little while so if you start getting replies to things that you left like weeks or months ago that's why I'm I'm trying to uh, kind of get over my inboxophobia, even though it's all a little bit not very time appropriate in my responses. So that's my apology. I am trying to get back to that. Now I have done my apologizing. I want to show you the cool things. So yes, the cool things. I have a subscriber called Richie who has sent me some cool things before. Um, He says he works at a flea market in America and seriously, the things that he sent me this time are so freaking cool. And I don't know how he came across something so perfect. Um, So basically these are postcards. They're written, some of them are written, some of them aren't but they date from the early 1900s. One of them is like 1908. Um, One of them is 1906, I think. Um, They're a little bit worn. It's quite hard to read the postmark, but they're all from the 19, like early 1900s. Um, And what's even weirder than that is that they're actually from Birmingham, UK. (laughs) Um, The address on them, they're mostly in... Uh, in Winston Green, Birmingham, which I've been to. That's that's pretty local to me. Um, actually, like, I'm intrigued as to what it was like when she lived there. Her name is Miss Lily Hammond. And uh, I'm intrigued um, because Winston Green is, is kind of a shithole now um, these days. It's actually, there was a kind of really awful, controversial, just bad um, reality TV show filmed there not that long ago. It was called Benefit Street and the participants were totally lied to by the, the like documentary makers. They'd been told they were on a show about a street that's really neighborly and everybody helps each other out. Um, when it turned out that actually they were making this documentary about people who live on benefits and like, oh my God, aren't they scroungers and all of this? Like, so they really got duped into opening up their lives and then it was very harshly edited to make them all look as bad as possible. But that's that's basically what Winston Green is, is like now. Um, it's It's not a lovely area if you're kind of going there from outside. You're usually going there for something dubious um but anyway so I don't know whether it was like that when she lived there but um my favorite one my favorite one of these postcards is this one which has a picture of Birmingham General Hospital on the front from I guess back in the day I don't know what Birmingham General Hospital looks like now but it I'm pretty damn sure it doesn't look half as cute as that. So this postcard is from Albert and his writing. Oh my God, like if you haven't gone to sleep, look at this writing. Just look at it, isn't it beautiful? 
I would love to be able to write like that. I actually tried, I tried to teach myself to write beautiful slanting cursive with a fountain pen many years ago because um, one of my blogs, The Angry Vampires, it initially began just as letters, angry vampire letters, ridiculous angry letters to companies, which I would often send. So I wanted to teach myself to write in cursive so that I could write out these letters as though they had actually been written by a vampire and send them to companies looking legitimately old school. And I uh, I never quite nailed it, um, unfortunately. And then I lost my fountain pen, so I don't know. But anyway, Albert says to Lily, he says, Dear Lil, and oh my God, seriously, just the writing, the writing is so dated and so beautiful. He says, Dear Lil, don't say... I can't write a bit. And dude, you can write really well. Your writing's beautiful. He says, sorry to tell you, they kept me in hospital two hours. This, and I did go through it. I can tell you. So I wonder what happened to Albert in hospital. And that's, I guess, why he's got a picture of the hospital on the front. Maybe he bought the the postcard at the hospital gift shop. Isn't it crazy to think of hospitals having gift shops in 1908? That that seems weird to me. I, I would have thought like the, you know, like the, the kind of chintzification and the, the touristy things. I would have thought that was kind of a newer thing. But anyway, he says, I did go through it. I can tell you. And then he says, I am going to bed. And he's put bed in quotations. And I think that's really interesting um, because it's like, why, why is bed in quotations? What was the in joke there? Like, does, does he mean he's going for a wank or something? Is it, is that just my dirty mind? Or, um, maybe he's still in hospital. So going to bed just means basically just, you know, going back to where you live (laughs) at the moment. I don't know, but yeah, he says, I did go through it. I can tell you, I am going to bed. We'll see you later from Albert. And uh, it's, I love I love the mystery of these postcards. They, there are none from Lily. There's only the things that Lily was sent. So you know nothing about her. You don't know how old she was. You don't know how she knew these people. Albert, like, I feel like his tone... <laughs> Um, I feel like his tone is is quite fond for, for like a 1908 postcard, like calling her Lil and the whole like, don't say I can't write a bit underlined a bunch of times and I'm going to bed. His tone is really quite familiar, I feel like for, for that period. So I'm thinking he's either got to be a brother or he's got to be some kind of like lover type situation, I'm thinking. Um... But I think that's that's the only one from Albert, unfortunately. So I don't I don't hear any more from Albert. Um, there's a very very brief one which has a picture of oh this is a picture of Victoria Square in Birmingham which very much still exists. Um, I don't think it looks quite as gorgeous as that, but yeah, Victoria Square still exists um they have the german the german christmas market is just kind of all around the bottom of there so that one when i saw that one i was just like oh my god i can visualize that like so much of that is still there but there's like little handsome cabs and things there's there's little kind of i think you can see kind of like a a horse and cart that's got some kind of like garbage or hay bales or something in the back of it so you can see like markers of the time and it looks like there's snow on the ground too. Um, it's interesting. But anyway, George simply congratulates her on her birthday. Congratulations on your birthday, George, to Miss L. Hammond. And uh, he sounds very formal. He doesn't have much to say for himself. So George, why, why don't you have more to say, George? What's wrong with you? Why wrote a postcard and just, just, that's, I mean, mm, you know, I feel that way about birthday cards when, when people just write, dear blah, happy birthday from blah, you know? And you kind of think like, oh, but why did you bother? I, that, that just makes me feel sad (laughs) when I get birthday cards like that. It's like, it feels like, 
like you're obligatory you know what i mean it feels like they've got you in your calendar you're obligatory they have to send you a birthday card but they don't have anything personal to write in it i just find that depressing so come on george i don't i don't like you george you've got very nice writing again though look 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 at that it's quite quite you you can you can see like old presidents writing like that can't you that's gorgeous um so I really, I like those ones for the writing. And then there's somebody who, um, oh my goodness. Oh, this is a beautiful postcard too. Oh, look at the people in their little hats. There you go. It's a picture of Cannon Hill Park in Birmingham, um, where I have been for a fireworks display back in 2005. And I ate a lot of cheese and drank a lot of whiskey and watched fireworks. And uh, that's my memory of Cannon Hill Park. So it's, it's, it's such a trip to see these cards that not only are they local and from the 1900s, like early 1900s, but they somehow ended up all the way in America at a flea market to then come back to me here. How weird is that? Because... It makes me think, so was it Lily herself or was it one of her descendants who was the gigantic hoarder <laughs> who kept all of these writings? You know, even the one from George that just says congratulations on your birthday. Did Lily actually care more about George than he cared about her? Because he hardly had anything to say to her, but she kept his card. <laughs> his card still exists, like, a hundred and what like 12 years later doesn't that give you chills isn't that cool um wow but yeah somebody took all of these old communications and they shipped them over to america when presumably lily or one of her descendants moved there they boxed up all of this like hoardatastic stuff because this wouldn't have been precious at the time you know it would have just been correspondence like letters postcards birthday cards and I don't think I would bring all of mine if I was to like move to America I I wouldn't bring like huge hordes of sentimental stuff so I think it's interesting you know was it Lily herself who moved to America and took all this stuff because I do I do think it's interesting um regarding America and the fact that Americans have so much more like obsession with and respect for history than Europeans do like because of over here we have so much history like our, our countries are like old as shit and you know there's there's like old monuments and crumbling ruins everywhere so we don't really care about that stuff um and our, our opinion on ancestry and heritage is very different too that we we don't really care about a person's heritage and you know whether your great 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 grandfather was Irish or Spanish or Italian we, we don't care about that stuff like to us it's like if you claim to be Italian you'd better speak the language you better have visited there a few times otherwise I'm sorry you ain't Italian that's that's kind of how it is here whereas in America there is this this great fixation with ancestry and history and roots and all of this because there is none in america it's such well you know unless you're native american but for most people you're immigrants which means that somewhere in your recent history pretty recent you know the last kind of hundred or so years you had a a relative an ancestor who was quite an adventurer and kind of went off on this crazy voyage that took weeks on a boat you know and lots of times horrible diseases would break out on these boats and everyone would die and uh or the boat would would end up shipwrecked or something it was it was like a big thing to voyage to america in those days and start a new life somewhere so completely unknown um and i, I think that's quite cool and i think that's something that americans don't don't think about enough that they they have a huge fascination with like the race and the the kind of what country their ancestors were for were from but they don't seem to really be so fascinated by finding okay but which ancestor was it who was the one who actually like you know cut this this generational 
thing of people who just live in <laughs> in England for like centuries, which is, I mean, I, I've never done one of the uh, like ancestry.com like spit tests or whatever it is, um, because I'm pretty sure my ancestry is incredibly boring. I'm pretty sure it's just English, basically just, just English, maybe a bit of European, that's it. I, I don't think most of my family have ever stepped outside of London <laughs> in like, generations until us moving up here to this shithole, um, <laughs> which was not my choice and would never be my choice. Ah, bitterness. But, um, but no, if you're American, um, someone in your, in your family was, was a big adventurer. And I think that's really interesting. And, you know, they, they chose to give you this very different life to anything that they would have had if they'd, they'd been, nervous or shy or they just thought I'd rather you know better the devil you know like most people do when their lives are difficult they think well look I can't I can't I just can't you know I can't uproot everything and go somewhere else and start all over again that's too hard so most people just stick it out in shit circumstances and if you're American then someone in your family was like nah nah I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna sit around here with all these people whining about how bad life is here I'm actually gonna go do something about it and I think that's pretty cool but uh, anyway there's my my, my little <laughs> my little waffle about Americans and history but um yeah this this person with the Cannon Hill Park card um I think they are the ancient equivalent of a sloppy writer because I I, I mean, it's kind of beautiful, but I can't read a goddamn word. Um, <laughs> I think it's like run a little bit with with age, but um, I really, uh, dear Lily, just to let you know, I have fat, sandy, fucks off. Hope <laughs> I can't read this. Hope you had a good time. Had your letter too late to answer? Blur, 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 you, Monday, blur, 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 blur. Yeah, I can't read that guy's writing, but um, <laughs> it's quite fun making it up. I like that one. And then, um, oh my goodness, this one, I really can't read this one. This is, oh, this is another view of Cannon Hill Park. Look, there's a... There's a lovely sort of sort of rivery canal thing that I don't think I've ever seen. Um, and this one, ooh, this one is from WH. They don't even give their name. So I don't know if it's a man or a woman. Because this is the thing. Every, it's very hard to tell apart men's and women's writing back then because everyone had such elegant writing. I feel like it's much easier to tell now. Um, but uh, anyway, they say... Dear Lily, with lots of swirly whirls, just a line to tell you I shall be there where I promised. Oh, doesn't that sound romantic? I shall be there where I promised. Maybe he meant Cannon Hill Park. Maybe that's why. Maybe they were going for a date in Cannon Hill Park. That's my little imaginary side story. Hope you will be there as early as possible. That definitely sounds a bit romantic, doesn't it? I will be there where I promised and I want you to be there as soon as possible. Oh, I think WH had a thing for Lily. I think he did. William. It's probably William, isn't it? I can't think of any other really common names with a W. Probably William. William loves Lily. I hope she loves him back. Um... <laughs> And then there's a very faded one from somebody called Emma with, oh, fuck me. This is Bridge North. This is the little town that I have taken you to many, many times um, on my little adventures. It's the little town with the black and white Tudor stuff where I get my bath bombs from. And presumably that is the cliff before they put the cliff railway on there. Um, wow. So yes, Emma is too faded to make out to be honest that is basically it for the written postcards there are some that are not written that are just kind of old postcards with old pictures on but no one's written them and those are really pretty to look at too but it's it's like it's the human stories that i really love and i think it is so cool so a huge 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 thank you to richie for sending me that and i 
Also, that only came the other day, and I'm like, how did you manage to get that to me? Um, because the post, dude, the post is messed up right now, particularly in America. In England, it's not great, but in America, what the? Um, yeah, I've I've got some posts that I'm I'm watching its tracking, and literally, it's nine days between every step of the tracking, <laughs> and um. So Richie, clearly you are some kind of wizard. Anna, the other person I wanted to thank is Mike. Uh, Mike, who sent me a while back, this is a while back, I'm so sorry, I was gonna write back to you and then I had a bit of an address fart and I kind of, kind of, I don't know, I don't know what I've done with it. So um, here I am instead. Uh, but yes, Mike sent me this book called The Astral Body and Other Astral Phenomena, which I have been, reading through with interest because I mean it's very dense it's very very dense there's like like a lot of words <laughs> a lot of words not many pictures but it is it is fascinating I feel like I read something oh lovely page sound I feel like I read something similar to this when I was a teenager because some of the concepts I'm like hmm I remember that like um Something that's quite scary <laughs> is uh, what, ooh, that's nice, what they describe as thought forms that apparently if, that, I mean, this, this, is, this is all kind of astral realm stuff, which I have never, still, <laughs> still attempting to attain my first actual astral projection, but I have recently had a lot of experiences of what is possible um, in the astral realm, which is a video I may have already put up talking about that by the time you see this, or I may be putting it up soon, but uh, either way, recently I have had interesting experiences in the astral realm, and it has given me a huge amount of like fascination for what is possible, what is not possible. But anyway, yeah, the, the thing the thing that's kind of creepy um, in this book about astral phenomena is thought forms that apparently if you are really fixated on something, if you have a lot of thoughts about one thing, particularly if it's something negative, it can literally create these kind of little demon things in the astral that, that kind of follow you around and populate your astral world these these thought forms that you have created and you've given life to through your obsession basically um and that that fascinates me because i i do think a lot about um you know what what they say about gods and things that did did gods create us or did we kind of create gods with our with our fixation is that what gives them life and if that is true, then things like popular fiction series, like Harry Potter, for instance, there are so many people thinking about Hogwarts, wishing they could go to Hogwarts. Does that therefore mean that Hogwarts has begun to exist on an astral level? Maybe. I think maybe. And that makes me think about my own stories and my own vampires and having been putting so much obsession into writing about them for like, I don't know, nine years or something now, do they exist on some astral level too? Um, so thought forms. Thought forms is the last thing I really read about in this book that is is interesting, but also quite creepy. This, I mean, this book is, I don't recommend it for reading at bedtime because some of it is, is quite scary. Um, like music apparently i just just opened it to the page i was at um they're saying that if you can if you can see into the astral um which is a fascinating idea you can sometimes see certain shapes around people and you can tell from the colors and the shapes um kind of what what sort of personality they have and how well trained their mind is how well organized their mind is. Um, and uh, it's, it's fascinating, it's really fascinating. And uh, particularly now that I've actually had experiences of my own with 
spirits and astral entities and all of this like suddenly I'm not viewing this book as like okay this is just someone's theory I'm viewing it as like maybe maybe this is like a manual I actually need to read like I'm experiencing this I'm living it it's it's wild so uh thank you very much to Mike too that that is like perfect timing that book I need to get stuck back into that book um even though it's quite dense going, it's very, very interesting. So, uh, so yes, anyway, I've, oh my God, this is long as a motherfucker. So uh, probably you're asleep by now or I don't know, comatose or something <laughs> or whatever happens to people when they overdose on ASMR, I don't know. But um, God, I was actually, I was actually gonna, I was actually gonna record another ASMR video tonight, but I think, I, th I think, I think, I think I've, I've done overtime as it is. Um, so I guess I'm going to shut up, but uh, yes, I wanted to say a huge thank you for those things in the mail. And also you are complete wizards, as I say, for getting it to me in the mail at all at the moment, because, oh, the mail is making me so sad. Being able to shop online is my freaking savior. And I did not realize how much I loved it until it was taken away, or not so much taken away, but turned into a demon. Because, uh, like, say, you know, I've, I've got tracking for things that I'm really excited about, and I've just watched it, like, like, click along so slowly for, what, about nearly a month now in one case, and another one appears to be completely lost, and I think I'm gonna have to get a refund, and it's like, oh, so... I mean, it's kind of good. I'm I'm shopping a bit more kind of eco-friendly now. I'm trying to keep my shopping within Europe just because it's like, you ain't ever going to see it otherwise. So um, anyway, that's that's a waffle. So I will, I will shut up now and just leave you with one nice little spray sound. Oh, and a bit of a lid sound. Yes, I I meant to spray my bee pal at the beginning and I forgot. Oh, that's quite nice. <laughs> this is the one that smells like sugared mint, bourbon, tangerine and lime. It's a very nice, ah, oh, it's lovely in summary. It makes me feel less sweaty because I feel really quite sweaty. ASMR is one thing you really can't do with the fan blowing. Um, Actually, the, the fan, it's got three settings, but there is really no setting that is low enough to have it sitting right there and blowing straight at me without like my contact lenses drying out completely and like sticking to the side of my eye. And it's just, it's all kinds of bad. So you just, you just have to sit here and drip with sweat. But uh, anyway, I think I may have just heard the milkman come and I'm currently in a running gang battle. <laughs> <laughs> with the milk thief um yeah we we still have a milkman who uh leaves milk outside at about two o'clock in the morning um and recently we've had a couple of our bottles of milk stolen so i wrote them a rude letter um informing them that the nocturnal vampire who lives directly above this doorway me uh has become aware of their doings, their sinister, lactic, udder suckling doings. I have become aware of their doings, and uh, I shall now be keeping my beady crimson eyeball upon them, and uh, should they attempt to take any more of our milk, they will find themselves peeled alive and splattered across the houses or some such nonsense. Um, so yes, I, I'm, I'm swooping down to grab the milk as soon as I hear it and then I replace the milk with an empty milk bottle and my letter. <laughs> and I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for the milk thief to get my letter. So uh, I'm going to go and uh, go and save the milk bottles before the milk thief gets there and beats me. I, I am the nocturnal vampire. I cannot be beaten by a milk thief. That will, that will make me the laughing stock of all vampires. So, uh, <laughs> God, it's hot in this room. Again, a huge, a huge thank you to Mike and to Richie. And seriously, Richie, your, your job is like the coolest thing. Like, I, I don't think we have flea markets like that in this country because of the fact that English people and Europe, you, you, blah, blah, blah. European people just don't have the same regard for history we we just we just don't keep like old 
letters and just stuff that we regard as trash but it's not trash it's fascinating maybe that's just because I'm a huge hoarder but I think it's fascinating and magical and it's it's so lovely to read those postcards that are so sparse and you can really fill in the gaps and just like imagine <laughs> imagine the relationships between the people so cool so yes Richie if you if you ever come across any more cards like that whether like wherever they're from in the world if there's just like a story that, that you can kind of spin between the two people and they're going for cheap then uh ah oh, yes I would love some more not to not to like totally blackmail you but if they're if they're about to be like tossed off a wagon or something then I will have them I will I will take that that weird dated crap I love those kinds of things but uh, anyway this is a gigantic waffle so night night sleep well or be relaxed I'm going to go and open the window and let in all the horrible little moth creatures um but at least let in some cold air because it's very, very sweaty. It's now 1.45 in the morning. And, uh, God, I, I, <laughs> I feel like a late night radio DJ actually looking, looking at the clock and there's my microphone in front of me and I can hear my voice. I, I feel like I should be coming out with, with, with some, some kind of cheesy, regretful stuff. So, um, so here's one for that woman I loved back in Tennessee. In 1985, did you ever have my baby? Did you get it scraped out? I don't know. I guess that kid would be pretty old by now. Probably knocking up women all of his own. Or maybe he's just a stain in an abortion tray. But here's gloomy Sunday for that woman I once hated. That's, that's my late night radio DJ voice. Uh, if, if you're on my Patreon, you'll uh, you'll already have been introduced to my uh, my my film noir voice. And, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, if 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 you if you uh, if you loathed loathed this 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 nonsense, but would like some more of it, uh, I have made my so far one podcast on Patreon because I keep making them and then hating them and then scrapping them. But there's one which is now public on Patreon. So. Uh, Go to my Patreon below if you want to go for free and have more waffles um, with with no no visual at that point, just a a film noir waffle. Um, <laughs> God, what, what 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 is it? What is it about microphones that turns me into a bit of a tit? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Okay. I'm literally going to shut up now. So night night. I hope you're not melting wherever you are because I certainly am. Over and out.